Thanks, mate. Okay. Torture. Torture is clearly defined by the Geneva Convention. It is rightly vilified as a violation of human dignity. Under the terms of this definition, 75,000 Australians are being tortured each and every day. And this is the culprit. <laughs> yes, indeed. He looks cute, doesn't he? And uh, it's hard to reconcile that image with the statements that I've just made. But for one in four Australians, the reality of having a child is actually closer to this. <coughs> Isn't it great having an off switch? Eh? <laughs> Now, if you're anything like me, at this point, you're actually feeling a little bit anxious because of that. And uh, that's completely normal because we are hardwired to respond to that sound. A recent study at the University of Oxford in the UK found that 100 milliseconds after you hear a baby cry, your adrenal gland goes into overdrive. It starts producing hormones, cortisol, cortisone, cortisone. And these, these hormones regulate key parts of your metabolic system, your heart rate, um, your breathing. They suppress appetite, and they suppress your sexual drive as well. Adrenaline is a very powerful drug, and once, once it's in your system, it's extremely hard to go to sleep. Um, and you know, you add, that, add a baby crying to that, and you've got absolutely no chance. So why am I talking about this, and what's this got to do with change? Well, I'm a designer. And I believe that change, meaningful change, has to be embedded in the real needs of real people. <clears throat> and I'm going to illustrate that today with a story about a very real problem and how we went about trying to solve that problem, how we went about trying to fix it. So let's start. All good stories start with a hero. In our case, a reluctant hero, and a cause, a quest. Our hero is a dad. He's a very tired dad, and this is him. This is a great guy. This is a guy called Christopher Mitchell. And uh, Chris is not a designer, or at least he doesn't think he's a designer. He's not a manufacturer. He's, he's a builder from the Gold Coast. But first and foremost, Chris is a parent, and he's a good one at that. Chris approached us with a very simple problem. Chris's child would not go to sleep unless he drove it around the suburbs in the middle of the night. <laughs> and I'm sure you're all familiar with that. <laughs> so um, he wanted to know if we could help, if we could help him design something that would turn an ordinary car into a car. He wanted to take the <laughs> sensation of driving and put it into a car. Great, you know, that's good. But what Chris had highlighted to us um, was a hidden need. And these are like gold, because a hidden need is something that you can really leverage. And he'd highlighted the fact that everybody needs to sleep, but that is heavily impacted when you have a young child. So we got engaged, and we started looking deeper into the problem. <laughs> he looks happy, this guy, doesn't he? Anyway, so um, we discovered that the baby and crying are not the problem. They're actually perfectly natural behaviors for a developing child. The problem is how carers react to that, how parents react to this. When you, um, when you have a child that doesn't sleep well, it affects everything. When we talk to parents, we talk to many of them, they constantly talked about sleep deprivation being the number one problem with children. It puts unbelievable pressure, unbelievable pressure on relationships. And um, you know, the, there was a definite need here, and the, the call for help was all about give us back control of our lives. So we set about doing that. It's about attempting to do it. <clears throat> and the first thing we do is usually try and get inside the problem. So we started talking to people, anybody who we thought could give us information that would be relevant. We talked to carers, we talked to parents, of course. We started looking at um, sleep control techniques, controlled crying. We started looking at chiropractic techniques. 
And uh, once we, we'd done all this research, we, we actually found a common theme. Believe it or not, there was something inside everything that worked that was common. It was a frequency, an oscillation, if you like. And it operated, I'm getting a bit technical here, but it operated around about 1 to 1 1.6 hertz. And we also discovered that a car, if you go back to what Chris originally approached us with, operates on a, um, on a multiple of those frequencies. But it really, it really didn't stick. It didn't resonate with us until we found out that that is the frequency that the human heart operates on. Then we knew we had something. So we started investigating this a little bit further. We started looking at the possibility of using a human heart. And we took that forward and tried to put it into a con. And the, the picture you can see right now is Chris and myself sat with a whole bunch of boxes of junk around us trying to work out how to make a cot in, turn into a human heart. And uh, <laughs> it was tough. I mean, one of the other things that we found out during our research phase was that sound is detrimental. Sound is actually counterproductive when you're trying to put a child to sleep which is, is not what you would expect, but it is. It actually works against you. It, it awakens the child. We also found out that sudden shears in movement um, also are counterproductive. So whatever we, had to, whatever we were going to produce here it had to be absolutely silent, and it, it had to be very subtle. You could only feel it. You couldn't see it. You could only feel it if you touched the cot, felt it. We struggled. We tried everything, we tried water balloons, we tried clockwork mechanisms, we tried many different ways of doing this. But the truth is that we were failing. And eventually, we stopped failing. We actually, in a moment of epiphany, found something. We found a solenoid um, that was part of another project. It was part of an electronic door system. And you can see it here, uh, surrounded by little lead weights and held up by a spring. And we literally nailed it to a cot and turned it on by just stabbing the wire at an old car battery that we had. It looked, it looked amazingly promising because as it bounced, it had that kind of bump, 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 bump of a human heart. And we, we actually, you know, we were very encouraged by this. So what we did is we quickly put together a prototype and approached some of the parents that we've been working with. And um, they were only too pleased to try it out. So we took it there found a restless child, plugged it in, turned it on, held our breath, and it worked. The child was put to sleep. It was, it was fantastic. So we knew we had a mechanism. So our next challenge was making it stick, making this solution something that human beings wanted to use, embedding it in the context of human life. Because you can't just take a solenoid and nail it to the side of a cot. It's just not going to work. So we went back to the parents and we started talking to them. We said, OK, tell us about the environment. Tell us about what else interacts. Um, and they talked about things like tweenies and things like that and, <laughs> and uh, other stuff. But essentially, this is the environment. And we realized quite quickly that um, whatever we did, it was going to have to integrate quite closely with this room. And it was going to go on the feet of the cot. So we needed to make it a foot motif. And we settled on these guys. These guys have got great PR. You know, they're, they're strong, they've got a good sense of family value, um, and they look after their kids. So we took the elephant and used it as a motif for the feet. And this is kind of what we ended up with. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. And as you can see, it doesn't make the cot look unstable. It actually makes it look quite good, and it looks a little bit friendly. So we kind of liked it. The parents group was fantastic. They actually contributed things like remote controls and nightlights. Um, you know, and it was only by this close collaboration that these things came into being. Um, and I, I can, you know, this, I, I only got a short amount of time, so I can only tell you so much. But that's pretty much as it ended. You know, Chris took this forward, and he made a big difference to a lot of people's lives. He, it didn't work for everybody, but it worked for most people. And it, it empowered them. It gave them back control. So I think to round this off, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This is, this is Emma. And Emma was one of the first children ever to be put to sleep by what we created. And Emma and her parents are sleeping very peacefully these days. And I wouldn't dream of waking them up, 
especially given what they've been through. Um, but Emma and her parents are at the very center of the message that I'd like to leave you with. And that message is this, that if you're going to try and make some sort of meaningful change, and it doesn't have to be anything big, you know, it could be saving the Great Barrier Reef, for example, or getting your football team to win games instead of losing them, or simply putting a child to sleep. Whatever you do, if it's going to be a meaningful change, then it has to start, and it has to move, and it has to end with people. That is my message to you. My name's Craig Mousy. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Craig. Fantastic.